I'd like to show you a little bit of the kind of work we do in the News on Wiki campaign, in which we aim to improve the coverage of news sources on Wikipedia and related wikis. So I found this publication called the Eastern Herald. So this, I don't know anything about this coming into it, but this is the front page of it. Uh, I think the, the first thing that I see here is a site that looks like a pretty straightforward news site. Uh, the tagline is protecting democracy and promoting free speech since centuries. So right off the bat, I am a little bit suspicious. The phrase since centuries doesn't sound like maybe a native, speak native English speaker wrote it. Uh, it also looks maybe more like someone thinking about marketing wrote it than someone thinking about journalism. It's not sort of the, usually, the usual way that we would construct a phrase like that. Also, the word free speech is run together as one word. Again, a little bit unusual. So it's a very traditional looking logo, very traditional looking presentation of news stories, but it's a little bit odd what's in the, uh, in the actual tagline. I'm also noticing, you know, there's, there's some social media links up here, not that unusual these days, but also it seems like a little bit of a flag that this might be more of a marketing venture than a journalism enterprise. So let's go to a web search. So I've searched the Eastern Herald, just straightforward, no quotes, nothing like that. And, uh, oh, actually, I'm not at the top of my search here. So if I go to the top of the search, the first one I found is the, is the site that I just looked at. The second one is actually Wikidata. So Wikidata is a project that's connected to Wikipedia. That seems a little bit unusual. If this is a news site that has a significant impact, uh, you would think that maybe other news sites would have mentioned it or quoted it here and there. Um, you know, maybe maybe some of their coverage would have been picked up in another news source, something like that. So that's a little unusual to find Wikidata as the second. Wikipedia often will show up as one of the first entries, but Wikidata doesn't usually, so that strikes me again as a little bit odd. And going down to the next one, we've got LinkedIn. So again, this is more the kind of site that you would think would promote a website than something that's focused on journalism. And Facebook, again, uh, sort of in the same vein there. And now we're seeing this is uh, Delhi, India, is so we're getting a sense of where this site is produced. I'm going to just go down a little bit more. Now we've got Muckrack. Uh, if you're not into journalism, you may not be familiar with the site Muckrack. It's basically a site that aims to help uh, public relations companies and professionals connect with journalists. So it lets journalists build profiles about themselves. That gives a PR person a sense of what kinds of news they like to cover. Uh, it might help them pitch a story to a particular reporter or a particular journalist. So again, we're looking at something that's probably more marketing than journalism focused. And Twitter, going along in the same vein. Now we come to an interesting one here, loc.gov. So LOC is Library of Congress in the United States. But if we look at this, it's, so it is the Eastern Herald, but it's also, it's from the years 1801 to 1804. So it seems pretty likely that we're not talking about the same news product. We're talking about something in Portland, Maine, probably has nothing to do with it. Uh, and then again, the next one, 1792 to 1796, same thing. So very credible source, but probably unrelated to the site that we're looking at. And then we've got Medium at the bottom here, which is another kind of social media self-publishing site that um, although some of what they do uh, is journalistic, some of what is done there, I should say, is journalistic, um, it's also heavily used for marketing. So I'm just going to say that my gut sense of this site at this, at this point is that it's probably not really a high quality news outlet. I haven't really seen anything to suggest to me that it is something that has drawn attention for its quality of news coverage. I, I, but I do have the sense that probably they have done a very, uh, you know, a, a very high amount of work in trying to generate interest on the web, generate coverage on the web, which is probably associated, associated, associated with search engine optimization and just trying to get their name out there in more of a marketing push than a journalism push. So let's look at the Wikidata item. So I see the title here, of course, and the description, a newspaper which promotes freedom of speech 
protect democracy. So strange grammatical error there. It's uh, the just the singular form protect. Um, and advocates the rights of minorities. Uh, going to go off the screen here worldwide. Uh, so it's just a little problem with my screen size. I've tried to make this small for the video. News Journal has a very different way of reporting. So different from what? This does not seem like what a straightforward description on Wikidata should look like. Um, seems a little strange. Oh, and I guess suppose to read the whole description, you can also see it down here if you want to see the whole thing on the screen. So again, some red flags. I'm going to scroll down. So Wikidata is sort of a it's it's a database that it's similar to Wikipedia except that it's very structured. So it lets you make specific factual statements about something. So in this case, it's an instance of an online newspaper. It's also an instance of a digital newspaper. It's also an instance of a news website. It's also an instance of a newspaper. This is sort of an unusual use of Wikidata. Typically, you would only choose one of these. Um, the the sense that I would have is that this the whoever filled all of this in may be coming from the mentality of, again, a search engine optimization practice where you tend to try to add a bunch of different keywords uh, that different people might type when they're searching for something so that they would find your site above others. So that, again, yet another flag here for me. I'm going to scroll down. So it does have a logo. A logo is a good thing. Uh, there's actually a couple different versions of the logo here. Uh, that's a good thing to have on a wiki project. It's useful. Um, but it's also it's unusual to have where for just a lone Wikidata item that does not have a Wikipedia article. Uh, we haven't checked in this video, but I have checked. There is no Wikipedia article about the Eastern Herald on the English language Wikipedia or on any Wikipedia. Um, so it's a little surprising to find that there's not one but two looks like fairly high quality logos uh, reflecting this site down again a little bit. So the language or name is uh, is in English. Its country is India. Okay, so this is straightforward. This is good. Again, the country is India. The title is the Eastern Herald. Uh, again, this is good. This is very thorough. The editor, the name of the editor. So we've got, and that links to this person's Wikidata item. Uh, I'm going to avoid trying to pronounce this because I don't know how to do it properly. So we've got country of origin. So we had country before, but now we have country of origin is India and Australia, and again Australia, uh, and the United States of America. So what is going on here? So that so when you have different countries of origin, one of the things that you can have with a property like that is the year that it applies to. So here we find that it has it started in 2009 in India. And in Australia, we've got 1804 to 18 to 7. Oh, I'm sorry, 1757 to 1854. We've also got 1990, uh, 85 to 1992. I'm not sure why start and end time are reversed in these two, but no big deal. And then United States of America, we've got 1792 and 1796. So here's a, a clue as to what's probably going on in this USA one, I think that's referring to the other Eastern Herald that we found before that was published in Maine in the United States. And presumably there's also another publication by the same name in Australia or has been at a couple of different periods in history. So this is probably a case where different people uh, or automated processes have updated Wikidata uh, not recognizing that there are different, there have been different newspapers that happen to share the same name. So this is probably sort of a, an innocent mistake of multiple people. Language of the work, straightforward, owned by. So here we have again uh, the same same person looks like as the editor. Uh, and again, this seems a little bit unusual that it would be so very thorough uh, and that it would have this person listed twice uh, for a site that does not have a, a Wikipedia article. And then it's got a link to the official website, which again, this is a good thing on Wikidata, but also it's it's a little bit uncommon to see on something of this status. Now we get to identifiers. So we've got a Facebook ID, and that links to their Facebook page, and same with their Twitter username. So all of this, to me, really uh, underscores kind of my early hunch that this seems like the result of a marketing effort that somebody uh, put in as much information they could about their own paper 
uh, trying to drive attention to it on the web. Uh, let's just continue to scroll down. This is where we'd have, we would have links to the Wikipedia articles on different language edition of, of Wikipedia if they existed. Uh, same with uh, various other wiki sites. We wouldn't really expect to see this on Wikibooks or Wikinews. Well, maybe Wikinews. Um, but, you know, typically Wikipedia is where you would expect to see something like this, and there is nothing. There is nothing on any other wiki site that is linked to this wikidata item. So, um, let's continue our review. I'm going to go over to Wikipedia, and let's just do a search on Eastern Herald. We'll put it in quotes so that we don't just get articles that happen to have the words Eastern and Herald in them. Uh, and let's see what pages come up. So we've got fake Indian currency note. So this is this aligns with uh, our finding that this is a, an Indian site, and it looks like it is citing coverage on the Eastern Herald in this Wikipedia article. We've also got list of Ahmadis, uh, and uh, so here it says Indian, or I'm sorry, Nigerian journalist. Uh, so this is an Indian publication with a Nigerian editor. So that's interesting. Uh, United K Kingdom and ISIL, again, this looks like it is quoting, it is citing um, coverage from the Eastern Herald. And it's and then uh, here we have Slomon Moody, same thing, except it looks like it's maybe a little bit more explicit. This little snippet of text makes it look as though uh, it's actually naming the Eastern Herald in the text, not just in the footnote. Uh, HBO series Our Boys again. Well, now this is this is really interesting. We're finding, uh, you know, it used as a citation for an American-made television program from an Indian publication. That again sounds like the kind of thing that a marketing person might do if they were tri trying to drive attention to their publication. So we could we could continue, but I think you get the uh, get the idea. So let's look at another page. I'm going to go to, uh, well, let's try to look for the actual URL, easternherald.com on Wikipedia. If you just go to the straightforward search function on Wikipedia, you won't find much. Uh, and there, you know, you can try different variants of this. I did before making the video. They all tend to come up with nothing. But there is a separate kind of search on Wikipedia. There's this page, external link search. And there's some instructions here on how to use it. So I followed the instructions. I did a little trial and error. H so here is a string for their website. And boy, oh boy, look at all those links. Uh, does it tell me here it is 11 results? It's just 11 results. OK. So it's not as many as I was thinking. So this gives us, uh, it's probably going to be more or less the same list that we saw before because I think those were pretty much all citations and they're all going to have the URL in it. So maybe there's no new, new information in this search, but we're kind of confirming what we were thinking in, in the previous one. So um, I'm going to jump over to a tab. This is the, I, I put in the owner and editor's name in Wikipedia. And oh my. And so it looks like there is no Wikipedia article for this person, but their name does come up on several uh, Wikipedia articles. The first one, I, I see this uh, list of Ahmadis. So let's take a look at that article. So this is not, about, this is going to be, I think, a long list of different people who share a name or a title. I'm not sure which that is. Uh, it's going to tell us at the beginning. Let's just take a moment and read it. It's an incomplete list of notable or famous Ahmadis, members of the Ahmadiyya community, a movement whose followers identify as Muslims but are excluded from Islam by the majority of Muslim scholars. Uh, so let's see where he is on this. Uh, let me, I'm going to just check the spelling again. So Muzaffar. page. Oh, well, that's, I already had that up. Okay, so here it is. It's under Writers. And I'm going to just close the search box so that we don't need the highlighting anymore. And 
if you're not an experienced Wikipedian, this might not jump out to you, but any Wikipedian, the first thing they're going to notice is that here's a whole section of people who all have links, blue links, to which means that they're those are links to a Wikipedia article. Or, you know, maybe in some cases it might be a redirect as opposed to an article about that person. But generally speaking, that's indicating that this person is covered on Wikipedia. But our editor slash owner is the only one in this, at least in this part of the list, under writers, who does not have a blue link. There's no link here. If I click on it, I go nowhere. And there is an external uh, citation, but as you can see, that citation is actually to an Eastern Herald article. It's Again, it's not like a separate organization that reviewed it. So, and let's just read what it is. Editor of the Eastern Herald, News Journal in India, a political analyst, peace activist, human rights activist, internationally acclaimed anti-terrorism and militancy journalist in India. So in India is repeated, that's interesting. This is a fairly straightforward text, except that it does seem, uh, again, to, to at least to my eye, it reads like a bit of marketing. It's also, you notice it's longer than what we've got for anything else. The Wikipedia policy for pages like this says that really you should just have enough information to allow someone to uh, allow the reader to know that they're looking at the the correct person and then they should be able to click into the place that has a l into the the Wikipedia article to actually learn the details so this is probably more text than we should have on a page like this now here's an interesting bit let's see if we can figure out who added this text and when they did it and uh, and see if we can learn anything from that so to do that, and I'm not going to show you the details of this, but I'll, but you can probably figure it out if you're experienced with Wikipedia. I'm going to click on the View History tab. And no, you notice for all of this stuff, I am not logged in. None of this requires any special privileges on Wikipedia. Anyone can do this kind of research if they know where to click. Anyway, if you go the, to the View History tab on any page, you will find this external tool Find, Addition, or Removal. And there's actually another tool, there's, there's an alternate. So there, there are two separate tools that this links to that basically do the same thing. So let's just click on the main one, and I've actually run this search. It takes a few seconds to complete, so we won't uh, repeat that. But this is what it looks like. It's called Wikiblame. Blame is actually a term that comes from computer programming. It's not really intended to, <laughs> I guess on a technical level, this is sort of who would we blame for adding this text. Right, but it's. Uh, I think if anything, it's sort of tongue in cheek, or uh, or just you know a bit of a technical term from programming. So I wouldn't really attach too much meaning to that. Anyhow, this lets you choose the any different language edition of Wikipedia or any of the related wikis beyond Wikipedia, and this will actually pre-fill everything if we just click it from that site, uh, and then you paste in the text that you're looking for. What was added? What are you, what are you looking for? Of. And then, and you can see this is a pretty, um, pretty bare bones tool. It doesn't have a lot of uh, graphics, so if you don't know what you're looking for, it can be a little bit confusing. But what you've got here is it basically looks at a lot of different revisions of the Wikipedia article, and then at the bottom where you see a red X and a green O next to each other, that tells you that that it found where that text was added. It was between uh, these two revisions. And it gives you a link, either the date or where it says here. Insertion found between April 13th, 2019 and April 15th, 2019 here. So let's click on that and see what that looks like. So this is what's known as a diff screen. It shows you the difference between the before and the after. And it shows you in wiki code. Up at the top, it tells you who did it. So here's the name of the, the username of the person who did it, Kiran Bajwa. Uh, and note, I, I notice again. I don't really know the structure of Indian or I guess uh, I guess Nigerian names or titles, so I don't know exactly what this means. But I do notice that the Bajwa portion of the username matches part of the name that we were searching on, Muzaffar Ahmad Nuri Bajwa. So that's again interesting. It suggests that there might be a connection. Maybe this is a family member or someone part of the same ethnic group uh, who might be closely tied to this person who added the information to Wikipedia. And what did they put in? So this is, again, it is in, in wiki code. So if you're not familiar with that, it's a little bit tricky to parse. I'm going to just highlight this part of it. The ref tag at the beginning and end, that tells you that's a footnote. That's the code that creates a footnote. 
So you can just kind of ignore that part. It's So it has the person's name followed by a footnote. And then it says, this is the text that we just read, editor of the Eastern Herald News Journal, India, etc. So another thing we can do from here is if you're looking, you see the username. Now that's a red link, so that means that they don't have a, a user page. But there are two links that can tell you something about their history on Wikipedia. The talk page, that's a link to that person's user talk page. Uh, so if anybody has made comments to this person, over the years, that will likely still be there on their talk page. And uh, contribs, that's going to be a list of all their contributions to Wikipedia under this username. So let's look first at their user talk page. I actually did not look at this one before starting this video. But let's, let's just look at the contents, because that's going to give us a rough idea of what we're looking at. Your submission for of articles for creation, and this is a it looks like a, a biography of this owner and editor uh, and also the Eastern Herald so it looks like this person the first two bits of response they got on Wikipedia this is in January of let's scroll down a little bit and we'll see what year January 2019 uh, it looks like they tried to create articles on both the newspaper and the editor and if we scroll down we find out that uh, we find out that it was declined. Uh, you have to kind of read through this text to see. Okay, so here it is. Unfortunately, it has not been accepted at this time. And there's a fair amount of explanation if, you, if they wanted to improve it um, to try to resubmit it. Uh, and then it's the same thing with the article about the newspaper, not accepted at this time. So they did try to, uh, to put the newspaper and the editor on Wikipedia. List of Indian journalists. So they added something there, but it was the name of a non-notable entity, or in this case, it probably would be a person. They probably tried to make an edit like the one that we found, but someone caught that and saw that there was no Wikipedia article about that person, meaning they shouldn't be on the list, and they took it out, and they notified them. Speedy deletion. So it looks like this person then tried to make the article on their own after their submission was declined, and then it was deleted by a process called speedy deletion, which basically means it wasn't even close to Wikipedia's standards for inclusion. So now let's go down. Next one, your draft article, the Eastern Herald, Sydney. So this is interesting. Maybe Sydney, so this reminds me of the Australia bit that we saw before. So maybe there's a bit more of a connection to Australia than we thought. I don't know. Uh, going down, we have a draft biography of the owner and editor. This was left by a bot, which means it was an automated process that caught this. Uh, but so this draft, this is the, the draft that this person tried to submit. And it had still lived on in the draft uh, state after that, but after, so this was five months later, after a while, uh, that would get deleted. So the, the idea of that draft state is not that something can just kind of live, th live there forever. It'll get deleted from there as well at a certain time. And so that's what happened in the next notification as well. So all of the talk content uh, directed at this person seems to be on this subject. This does not appear to be someone who's, you know, has interests in music and you know, technology and, you know, or, or a bunch of different subjects and is coming to Wikipedia to learn and to share knowledge. It seems like someone whose focus is very singular on getting coverage of this particular news site and this per particular editor uh, on Wikipedia. So now let's look at their user contributions. And you saw the link before. Here's another place to link to the same place. In the lower left here, you'll see user contributions. This is going to show us every edit that this person has made. And this one might be a little bit more difficult to tell how um, focused it is because, as we saw before, they're adding citations to a variety of different articles. Uh, but uh, if we wanted to explore this, we could look at every one of these. So it's, it's not a terribly long list. They haven't made that many edits to Wikipedia. It looks like it was all from January 2019 through March 2020. Um, and if you want to see what any of these specific edits was, you just click the diff uh, link on that line, and that's going to show you that diff screen of the before and after of that edit. 
So anyway, I'm I'm going to wrap this up. The idea of this video is just to give you a sense of how a Wikipedia editor might evaluate something like this. I do want to mention that just just because someone is approaching this from a marketing uh, mindset doesn't necessarily mean that everything that they did uh, is is a bad idea. It may be that they that some of what they added is actually a link to uh, high quality coverage on a you know if they if they put in a footnote in an article that might really have added value. So uh, I I just want to be clear I'm I'm not advocating that. Uh, that Wikipedia editors should go in and remove every single thing that this person did, but it does look at, like a case where some kind of intervention is warranted uh, because it doesn't really look like this is someone who's here with the idea of improving Wikipedia. It looks like someone who's really trying to use Wikipedia much the way that they would use YouTube or Facebook or social media uh, to drive interest in their site, and that's really not what Wikipedia is for. So anyway, uh, just to come back to where I started with the News on Wiki campaign. This is a campaign we've been working on off and on for a couple of years. What we're trying to do is, uh, is develop high quality coverage of news sources on Wikipedia. In this particular case, what we might do as part of this campaign uh, would be to clean up that Wikidata entry. Uh, the you know cleaning up the footnotes that were added to various other articles, that's not really a part of the particular campaign that we're trying to do. But a campaign like this really is just about rallying people uh, who have intersecting different interests. And you know, I think any, any Wikipedia editor who comes across something like this is probably going to be tempted to go off and, um, and clean up the various activities around footnotes as well. So that's probably something that would be an indirect outcome of our campaign. Uh, I do intend to uh, to do another video once there's been some kind of response to this. Uh, so what I'm not going to uh, take action on this myself. I'm going to just uh, point it out to uh, other Wikipedia editors who have an interest in this kind of cleanup. And that way I'll be able to do another video and show you from a somewhat objective perspective what does it look like when Wikipedia editors encounter this sort of thing. What do, what do the actual results look like? So thanks for watching. I hope this was interesting and check back later. Thank you.